All right, this is a continuation actually of the, the select board meeting, which is uh, the all committee meeting, which uh, we have had now for about 10 years. Uh, and it's always very helpful each year for the committees to express what they've done in the past year, what they're doing now, what they're planning to do over the next year. It helps people coordinate a little better. Um, I was at a uh, Massachusetts uh, Selectmen's Association meeting uh, a couple of Saturdays ago, and I had to be on one of the panels. And uh, I, I brought up in what I was saying about the fact that we have an all committee meeting, and it's a very helpful meeting. And to my surprise, there were towns that came, selectmen that came up to me afterwards and said, boy, that is a great idea that you guys do, that you let your committees speak to one another and your boards speak so that they, they know what's going on among the boards. I was under the impression that every town did this, but apparently we're, we're kind of unique because there aren't many towns that do this type of thing. And uh, I think it's very important, and I'm sure that each year we get a little bit, little bit better at it, and uh, we learn a little more about what's going on in town with the committee. Ah, there's finance now. <laughs> hey, Alan. All right, so um, the Patriots are playing at 8 o'clock. <laughs> so we're going to try to go through this um, expeditiously, although we want all the good information to come out. Um, and we'll just, we'll just start, we'll start with Walter, and we'll go around. Go ahead, Walter. Oh, all right. I'm here because uh, of the newly constituted and newly named Highway Facilities Committee, which is the Garage Committee. Can we introduce each other, ourselves, as we oh, go? Oh, Walter, know. Walter Good. Thanks. Um, and uh, this committee has had one meeting. Uh, we have a heading on the website, but it, it isn't filled in yet. I've got to learn how to get that up and running. It will have our meeting schedules. Uh, that is that is up uh, under under town government committees, highway. Um, there's a page for the committee and with the meeting dates. Really? It was great. It was yeah, it's, it, it's in the menu. You have to go through the menu. Right. Um, in any event, um, would you like to know the meeting dates now or get them off the website? I would really like people to come. Uh, one of the things we are going to try this time is to get people to come to meetings, people to come to, especially to our next meeting, November 6th. It's You're Tuesday. Mm. It's going to start with a tour of the existing garage. And I think that if we could get a lot of people to come, it would really simplify this job and, and would encourage people to help us. What time of the day? When is it? It's going to be at 7 o'clock. Uh, six, 6 at the garage. Oh, 6 at the garage. And 6.30 at the town office because the election will be here. We hope to hold most of the meetings here in case we get a crowd of people, which we hope to get. So... Um, I'm very happy to hear Tom say we. He has helped us out an awful lot in the beginning. Ken, who did a great job last time but didn't want to be chairman, is on the committee. And uh, as is Ron, Tom Brogel, Jerry Axelson, Liv Wyatt, who was on last time. And uh, we... Have, I'm told, and we have to learn more about this, a new sense of urgency um, uh, because uh, OSHA regulations, which formerly exempted uh, municipalities and perhaps others from safety inspections, uh, no longer grants that exemption. And for any of you who've been to that garage or have even heard of it, you can be assured that OSHA would have a field day there. And that could cost the town money. It could cost the town that garage or the use of that garage. Um, 
So we're really hoping that this time around we can find a solution to a problem that isn't going to go away. It's only going to get worse, and it's only going to get more expensive <coughs> to fix. Um, Well, the last thing I was going to mention is that in the meeting the go around last last time, um, several people um, had criticisms. You could call them constructive criticism, or you could call them something else. But we want to welcome criticism, but we want to welcome it before the meeting. <laughs> it sure doesn't help. 15 minutes before the vote to say that you've got the whole thing figured out and uh, so forth. So um, we want suggestions from people and we want suggestions on how we can get suggestions. We want to include the people who um, well, it's everyone who doesn't want their taxes to go up. We want to encourage people to come for those reasons, but for other reasons as well. We'd like to get this figured out with a lot of people well in advance. So, Great. Thank you, Walter. Yeah, I, I think uh, the Garage Committee is a, a very important committee, uh, and as you say, there's, there's a, a certain amount of urgency to this that uh, we really need to get this problem solved. For a bunch of reasons. Sure. Yeah. David? I'm David Bartman. I'm chair of the Personnel Committee, which must be one of the smallest committees, maybe apart from ZBA. There are three of us on the committee, and uh, fortunately there are two lawyers, and I'm not one of them. But the two lawyers approach things from different points of view, which in the case of this committee is a crucial thing, because this is the committee that deals with the uh, salaried and full-time and part-time salaried employees of the town. And it was empowered a good while ago uh, to put together a handbook, among other things, in which the policies regarding employment and benefits would be spelled out on a regular basis. And the handbook does require updating and indeed, uh, there's a certain urgency to get this done because the laws have changed fairly recently. A good number of them have changed. Uh, and one of our members, Susan Fenton, who is not herself a lawyer for the municipalities but for business interests, however, she's fully aware of what applies to us as well. So Susan has been indispensable in looking at the handbook and saying this needs doing, this needs doing, this needs doing, have you put the posters that belong up in the right spots, all of this, indispensable. And Bob Stone, being a lawyer for police interests, represents a municipal viewpoint in this. And though he's been ill uh, for, for quite a while, He's back on the committee, active, and it's wonderful to have him back. Um, the handbook in question is approaching the point where we will have probably at our next meeting, November 7th, the final for revision. It has taken a good bit of revising, and um, Tom put together <laughs> the number of changes that have been made and at, at this point, at this actually, meeting... My, it was actually Lisa who did that. Oh, Lisa. Well, in, at this point, we are up to 14 that have been made in the handbook. And rather than go through them, it's to be aware that it is a truly revised handbook. And the last revisions were made on uh, July 18th, when both Ron Sweet and Jan Warner had a chance to review the updated revisions and they made comments. So we are about as commented upon as we can be. <laughs> and, and hopefully by November 7th, we no more comments, we'll have the, have the thing. But this handbook then goes to the selectmen for their approval and when done, it is the book that then is directed to all salaried employees 
with all the stipulations of what it means to be employed, but at the same time, the rights of the town, but the rights of the employee. It's a balanced picture, because there are definitely benefits and things that the uh, employee has as the right, uh, their rights given municipal employment. And so this committee of three does not meet in a vacuum. It meets with Tom and with Lisa. And Tom essentially is the person who sets the agenda, given the fact that he, on a daily basis, is the person who's working with just these questions that the handbook addresses. And Lisa, fortunately, has been a lawyer, though most people don't know that, and she is a master uh, taker of minutes, which is <laughs> critical in this committee because these are complicated questions that do arise, and given Given Susan Fenton's and Bob Stone's viewpoints, the, there has to be a way of, of, first of all, noting them. Susan moves pretty fast. And uh, Bob, slower, but still viewpoints. Um, I'm kind of the nickel between two dimes in this case, because if there's a <coughs> difference of view, I, the tie, I break the tie vote. Um, as I said, we are about to finish this on November, November 7th. And it will then go, as I say, to the select board. Tom has the feeling that because it runs 37 pages, mm. it and is complex, though we've tried to make it as simple as, and direct as possible, that there needs to be, for, for any new employee or a, an employee who doesn't quite understand certain things, a chance for that person to sit down with a, a, a person who's thoroughly familiar with the handbook and go through it. And Tom has volunteered to do this. So rather than having an HR person assign the job, we don't have an HR person except Tom, that he would like to be able to do this to new employees, uh, part-time or full-time. A critical thing, we think, in the matter of, of the handbook. Um, we've had since Oh, since the beginning of the year, one, two, three, four, five, six meetings, which is more than what was required by the bylaw. Um, one very important thing that came up was in one of the meetings, and I think it was in an August meeting, the question of the teachers. The teachers are town employees by virtue of the fact that their salaries are paid by the town. And this includes also the staff of the principals. So you've got the, the uh, people in the kitchen, you've got the custodians, and you have the secretary. The question was, the handbook which they work with, is it consistent in what at least is right for a town employee to know that he has in the way of benefits and so on? It, that, that caused Susan Fenton to look at their handbook, and in looking at it, she made suggestions. We had the principal of the grammar, of the grammar school come in, Kirsten, uh, and she's new, but at the same time, it was a very good meeting, very open meeting, very friendly, and it looks like down the road, the adjustments that Susan felt and others that should be made to their handbook without it offending or affecting in any way the school committee's basic dominance of this area. But because they are salaried employees of the town, the town does, the, the town does have the right to at least say in their handbook that these, and they will not conflict with anything that the, uh, the union has worked out as, as um, benefits and so on with the teachers. So that's a new thing. And uh, we feel that's a major thing, wouldn't you say, Tom? Oh, yes. Yeah. And uh, apart from that, I think I've covered pretty much, and we vote on this handbook November 7th. Oh. Mm -hmm. Thank you, David. Thank you. Um, you know, certainly human resource and personnel issues have become extremely complicated. Very, very. And, um, uh, you know, the personnel committee does, does a great job with, yeah. with these matters. One of the, uh, the regional services that's being investigated by the Franklin Regional Council of Governments is, is a regional uh, HR situation, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, I, I think that uh, we will probably take advantage of in, in some way, shape, or form uh, to help 
the personnel committee. Uh, yeah. Because again, it's become extremely complicated, and now you have the difference between yes. the, the teacher situation and our, our, yeah. our other staff employees. So we have to make sure that we have all our ducks in a row when it comes to uh, to our personnel handbook and uh, uh, the other matters regarding our personnel. Yeah. So thank you, David, for your you. work on the committee. Alan. Hi. Alan Singer, Chair of the Town of Conway Finance Committee. A uh, total of five slots, uh, also shared by Andrew Boudon, who is a uh, business owner in Franklin County, as well as a homeowner, of course, here in Conway. We also have Tom Donovan, who's a, a longtime member of the Finance Committee. We also have Bob Stone, who yes. is a liaison between the Personnel Committee and the Finance Committee. should add that you know, at salary expenses, human resource, the, it's the largest individual item of the, uh, of the Town of Conway budget between the grammar school and the town. And then we also have uh, Roy Cohn, who is a liaison to the Long-Term Capital Planning Committee. And that also has a tremendous impact on town finances. And at this point, for fiscal year 19, which we're in, we haven't gotten our free cash yet certified from the, from the Department of Revenue. Sometime over the next month, presumably that'll happen. And we'll have a, uh, a meeting of the uh, various constituencies in the town government to review the budget and uh, talk about issues for the coming budget year, which budgets have to be submitted this December for the fiscal year 20, which would start on July 1 of 2019. And in terms of events coming up, well, uh, there is an, some key areas. First, we don't we have an acting uh, superintendent of the uh, regional school district. Uh, Darius Modesto. We also have lost our business manager for the regional school district. So I've heard that she wants to come back, Patty Cavanaugh. Yeah. So we have a consulting firm that'll be drafting up the budget. And uh, as you've mentioned, Dave, that we have a, uh, a fairly new Conway Grammar School mm -hmm. principal. And between those, that's the largest portion of our budget, about 60% is, is schools. And then other issues that we have coming up would be uh, we have a union negotiating period coming up for this coming year. Mm -hmm. On the audit front for the town, for the grammar school, for the regional school district, and we also have an audit that's being uh, conducted. It's a biannual audit. And so the fiscal year 19, uh, is what would be, um, 20 rather, will be our audit coming up. I think it's just been completed, right? The initial round, uh, Tom, of the audit from Pueblo Zillian Clark. Yes, we've, we, uh, they've just been in and uh, looked at the books, so they're, uh, they're writing up the audit right now. Yeah. So That's for fiscal year 18. 18, okay. So I'll be looking forward to the management discussion analysis. Every audit, every couple of years, focuses on a different aspect. Going forward, one of the areas of concern that I'll be looking at is we do have uh, several dozen uh, special revenue funds, many of them were benefactor to the town. And uh, the principal hasn't kept up with the pace of inflation in terms of expenses. So there's the issue of, well, the revenues that these funds generate every year from their return on principal, <coughs> necessarily be you know, it's adequate to uh, fund the budget for the town. So we have to look at that coming up. And uh, those are some of the areas that uh, you know, will always make it interesting looking at the operating expenses portion of the town budget, other than just salaries and wages. And uh, then also the uh, Darius Modesto, the acting superintendent, sometime in November, I forget the date, but we're presenting uh, a- 13th. Uh, number 13, thank you. The uh, long-term capital improvements for the regional school district. Mm -hmm. That's very important because that would require, require bonding more than likely would affect our, uh, our, our budget and our, our uh, levy and assess portion for our town of Conway budget. <coughs> and of course, we have other long-term capital improvements that uh, one of them, of course, being the town garage, though that one probably won't impact fiscal year 20, but uh, you know, something we'll have to pay attention to. And always be mindful that at this point, we don't have a lot of other growth in our town revenues other than levy and assess of uh, mostly residential property. So we're mindful of uh, expenses that we can cut where we can and economize in order to keep our, keep our, our current tax rate you know, below $20, $21 per thousand. Right now it's just under $18.65 per thousand. And uh, that's been a lot, of, a lot of sacrifice in doing without. And uh, that's that. Thank you, Alan. You're welcome. Uh, fortunately, the state is doing very well fiscally so far, and uh, hopefully some of that, uh, that increased revenue to the state will, will filter down to us in, in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. 
Yeah, this coming Saturday, the Association of Town Finance Committees is having their annual powwow at the Devons Commons Center. Mm -hmm. One of the presenters will be Jay Ash, who's equivalent to our Secretary sure. of Commerce. Yeah. And certainly make it a point with the many other hill towns attending, because for the entire Commonwealth, you have the posh suburbs of Boston, but for hill towns, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, DESI, the formula, we've had three different gubernatorial campaigns vowing to change it, and it hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. And I'll certainly bring that front and center, Mr. Raj, because it affects us whole town very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hi, I'm Giselle Italian. I'm one of the co-chairs of the Cultural Council Committee. And um, our charge is primarily to distribute the money that comes down from the state to uh, mm -hmm. folks who apply for small arts grants. And we're, we've, um, we will be doing that on November 7th we'll be meeting as a committee and reviewing the applications. Mm -hmm. um, we also, every, it has been that every three years we're supposed to have our own event that, or some kind of outreach so that we can make sure the community is aware of the Cultural Council and um, knows how to apply and all that. So we did an event this summer where we had Tom <coughs> Riccardi come and we did a lot of publicity and it was a very successful event and we did took a survey of what people's interests are around what kinds of events they'd like to see happening. Last year we were a little disappointed in the quantity and quality of applications and so we did more outreach this year and we've, we've gotten way more applications so we're really pleased with that and we feel like we'll have some really good choices to make and one of the things we were disappointed in is that most of the events that people were proposing were not happening in Conway. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to support some things like, you know, the, the Pioneer Valley Symphony or things that benefit Conway residents, mm -hmm. but we really would like to see more things happening and based in Conway. So that's our goal as we uh, go into this grant season. And we've also decided that we will do some kind of event that the Cultural Council itself will sponsor, some kind of event at least once a year. Um, and so we've been brainstorming different ideas. The polls have shown that people are very interested in science and nature events, um, musical events, and uh, events about history. So we've got some ideas brewing about some of those kinds of events that we'll sponsor over the next year. Thank you, Jessica. We, we, uh, we do the grant every year for the, for the Cultural uh -huh. Council. And I was wondering, are there any other grants that we might try pursuing um, aside from that, that standard grant we get every year? For, for arts yes. specific? Mm -hmm. um, I'm aware of, um, in another capacity, I used to write grants from the um, Community Foundation of Western Mass. Oh, okay. And they, they, do, they do support um, initiatives across Western Mass, um, arts initiatives, education, all kinds of initiatives. So that would be something to look into. And they're not that hard to write mm -hmm. those grants. I, okay. I've written a lot of those myself. Great. So. That's terrific. Th thank you. Yeah. Ron. <laughs> Ron Sweet, Highway Superintendent. <laughs> uh, busy year. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, winter was not a very good winter last year. We didn't really have a lot of snow, but we had a lot of bad weather which in turn kind of destroyed our road, a lot of our roads that were not that great in the first place, but they really we had real issues with some of our blacktop roads that we're addressing now. We did Matthews Road earlier, the end of fiscal year 18, and had some problems with a contractor there, so that's held us up and hopefully next week, by next week, it'll be finished up. We just reclaimed Hoosick Road because the blacktop was so bad down there that we didn't figure that patching it would get us through the winter, so we had it reclaimed and it's actually pretty nice down there right now. Everybody seems to be pretty happy down there. We also are in the process of reclaiming right now part of North Poland Road and Main Poland Road, um, and that will be paved. It's supposed to be in the first, second, and the fourth, no, fifth and sixth. So by next Tuesday, hopefully, if weather is good, then we'll all have new pavement on them. So, oh, let's see what else is going on. There's so much that's been going on. Uh, actually, we. 
it, the 116 project, the paving project by the state, we ended up with about 600 yards of millings that we actually took in, mixed a little gravel with, and put on Roanbrook Road. So that got a new layer of um, material put on it that wasn't that expensive for the town because the state donated a bunch of the millings. And we are behind right now with fall grading. The weather hasn't been very good this summer. <laughs> We've had a lot of rain, not a good time, well this fall even has been a problem with the weather. It's still being a problem. <laughs> um, but uh, I think we'll be, if we get another month of good weather, I think we'll be in good shape. Uh, at, the, at the state level, um, because of the fiscal situation, there's a lot of pressure uh, to to bump up the Chapter 90 funds, and uh, you know, right now we're about 200 million a year, and uh, the, the Massachusetts Municipal Association is pushing for 300 million a year, uh, and you know, hopefully we can get at least some of that through the legislature, and uh, we may have more money for you know road uh, road maintenance and, and repaving. Yeah, so. I actually did apply for a Mass Works grant, but. I haven't got the official word, but I'm pretty sure we didn't didn't get it. But, okay. So maybe next year. Um, okay. How's the North Poland Bridge? What's that? How's the North Poland Bridge? Actually, that bridge that we voted to fix is now on the state um, re to re replace it for 2023. So at this point, we're going to try to just limp the bridge along until then and let the state great let it's, the state fix it let the let state, state fix it because it. there will be a two-lane bridge um so it'll be a benefit all the way around great okay. yeah great. Well, and we did the governor did sign um supplemental chapter 90 money so mm -hmm. we'll be receiving another Fifty, oh, just under fifty-six thousand, fifty thousand, fifty-three thousand. Yeah, which is good news. Right. People in town regularly ask me to get you to repave the road down into Buckland, but <laughs> that's that's on the thing for 2022. <laughs> Tip program. Thanks, thanks, Ron. Carl, how are we doing? Hi, Carl Noki, Conway Board of Health. Um, we're doing good. The Board of Health is doing all its inspections, and we a lot of Title V work this year, a lot of failures in uh, those, those systems, probably close to 50% of what we did. And it was just you know a matter of time and stuff. But we're doing our um, food service, our, our um, food establishment inspections, and uh, we're catching all the B&Bs, and we're keeping an eye on the Airbnbs as they tend to float in and out, but if we keep an eye on the same thing that people look at for advertising, we can see what they see, so we see a new place and we, we grab them and make them do an inspection and pay a fee and, and whatnot else, so that's working real well. And um, we've had a uh, reduction of members, it's normally a five member board, we lost three members um, last spring right around election time, uh, people were up for um, renewal and they, they didn't take it and we had another member go out on, on age and injury. So that left uh, just two of us left to run the board, which was not enough to have a quorum to make any decisions. So we asked the uh, select board to appoint Ginny uh, Knowlton to, to the uh, Board of Health and she's, she's been terrific. She's, we're at a meeting, she's trying to do both jobs now as the clerk and, and, and a board member, but uh, things are going wrong really good. Um, we've also got the uh, transfer station to take care of mm -hmm. and run that and um, we decided we're, we're in a crisis uh, as far as the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District is concerned because they keep a very close eye on the trash and the recycling. Mm -hmm. So our back in 2009, our recycling was way, way up. We were, we were one of the top towns in the county per, per capita. And by now we're we're down to close to the bottom. Has a lot to do has a lot to do with the fact that um, we don't are up till 
the summer we, we, we hadn't uh, charged for um, like bags and stuff like that, pay, pay as you throw mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Our operation's been pretty free and wide open. So we tend to think a lot of trash is coming in from out of town into the into the transfer station. Wow. Mm -hmm. So so our numbers are, are really, really down. And so what we've done is we've established um, dump stickers. You probably all got them yeah. windshields. And uh, got a little feedback from that. You know, you're always <laughs> going to get a little, a little feedback that's been interesting. Um, it's small. I mean, just a, a very small uh, community. Um, and we've yet to see, you know, we have, we've yet to get any numbers together to see if that's helped our recycling. Mm -hmm. If we don't get close to the numbers, I, I would say by next July, we'll, by the 1st of July, we'll be doing paper throw. Because mm -hmm. we'll, we'll have no choice. It's, it's just going to have to cost you to, to throw more trash away. Or and where you can put stuff in recycling, which we actually, actually we end up getting paid for everything that we recycle. And the town ends up with the money that comes in from it. And it's probably uh, between $900 and $1,000 a month that comes in from the MRF, the management um, material recycling facility. So we get paid back from that. And, and, and the money goes right back into the town to general funds. Um, so the better we do in recycling, the more money we get, which, which also helps the town also. Um, Capital improvements, looking at the future. Uh, the trash compactor is on its last legs. Uh, waste management's been real good over the past year or so with repairing it mm -hmm. and, and swapping motors out. We've, we've lost some serious parts on it and, and they just fix it. They come up and they, and they take care of it. And that's been real good. But I think at some point, you know, it's probably going to be a I'd say a $17,000 investment to put another one in. This, this particular compactor is, is 20 years old, whereas in the past, historically, they've last for, lasted about 15. Mm -hmm. So we've bought some time on it, but, but we're going to need a new one soon. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's about it. We've got new, new people coming on board. We're, we're actually got people coming in to, to fill the, the board back up again. We've got some really good prospects and uh, whatnot. We're doing good with the transfer station attendance. We're getting that under control. And we're doing good with training. We've had everybody, everybody's taken, including board members, have taken hazardous waste training and transfer station attendant training. Just, you know, if, if somebody's got to jump in, we, at least we know what we're, what we're supposed to look like we're doing. Yeah, the guys that are there that do the work, I mean, they're, they, they know best. But, uh, sure. yeah. So, yeah, we're doing real good. good. Carl, is that, is that um, $10 fee for the sticker? Is that going to be an annual charge? Yes, sir. Good. Yes, sir. So, as I. I got by with 17 years for for a buck for a dollar, right? <laughs> for as long as you owned your and, car. And yeah. I was would have advocated for a long time ago that we have an annual charge. Yes. Because yeah. our, our especially recently we're having some well obviously you know some tremendous charges uh, for waste disposal mm -hmm. and, and recycling right. disposal. Right. So, right. And, uh, and fortunately, a lot of what you hear on the news about recycling being given back and stuff is not happening to the Franklin County Solid Waste District because we're going dual stream. Mm -hmm. Normally, what the, the hauling companies have done is helped is helped the towns out by, by doing single stream, which means they take their paper and their glass and, and cans and they mix it, they co-mingle it. But then they can't get it apart when mm -hmm. it gets to a facility to be recycled. So the stuff goes into landfills, which are filling up even in China. Yes. So, 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 by doing dual stream, we can send stuff, specifically paper and cans, and the cans and bottles kind of get separated also. For and, and each everything gets recycled, mm -hmm. and scrap metal too. Sure. Scrap metal also. Great. Yeah. So one of the things that I hear about from all of these people are grateful that they don't pay that per bag thing. Mm -hmm. I hate paying the per bag thing. Why? Well, and most people, even in the towns that do, the people hate. It. And and I would like to see you ask the town ask town meeting for a vote as to whether or not something like that goes forward. Um, mm -hmm. Well, that's, before that's you a, do it, that's a good idea. But the board of health runs the transfer. I, I understand. And it's our responsibility. So it's not a question of legally required, but I think it's the better th course of action and the better strategy to go about doing something like mm -hmm. that. Well, and we've had write ups in the in the visitor. We have write write ups in the in the book that goes out uh, for the annual meeting and stuff. 
old, and a lot of it has been focused on, on that, on yeah. recycling and stuff, but doesn't seem to be getting through to people. Yeah, a per bag, a per bag charge would be an administrative nightmare. It would. Yeah. It would. It'd be, it'd be a nightmare for us to deal with. Yes. Let alone yeah. you guys too. An, an annual charge is the best best way to Absolutely. I, I agree 100%. I wish we didn't have to do the annual charge. I just wish everybody behaved, but they don't. Well, you know, that's a that's, that's fact of life. Yes. You were saying circumstances might force you to do a, a per bag. Yes. And yeah, that, if, if we don't turn, if we don't do some significant turnaround in recycle versus trash by next summer, we're, we're, we're going to have to go to it because we'll have no choice. How can we force people to, to do that other than hurt them in the pocketbook? So more, more separation at the source. Yes. Yes. Or separation at home. Yeah. And, and we've, actually, we've actually empowered the, the transfer station attendants that if they see somebody throwing recyclables into the trash, that they can stop them and tell them to take them back home, separate it, and bring them back in separate pieces. We've also gotten support from Kenny, uh, Wamet, and, and uh, others that we can actually write little citations out to these people and find them. 30 bucks for the first offense, 60 bucks for the second, 100 for the last one. You know, down the line, we, we can actually do that. As the Board of Health, by state regulations, we can actually do that. So we're going to get nasty with that, too. Okay. Great. So our recycle has dropped. It's yeah, it's recycling's gone down and trash has gone up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah I, I, I would have thought that most people in town are very conscious about recycling and making yeah. sure that... Right. that well, one, of the, one of the theories is that it's not all coming from the town. Okay. Uh, we, have, right. uh, we have a feeling that people are bringing stuff into their friends who live in Conway and have them having them... They're, bring they're, it to they're, the trash. Put, they're bringing their trash to yes. Conway. Yeah, mm -hmm. really. And, and that's happened because it's been documented by the Franklin Counties. Jan Amin came up with that concept. I looked at her. What the heck? She says, "Yeah, no, we've, we've seen it in other towns. Roe is a, is a perfect example because they're like us. They don't charge, mm -hmm. and and they have a monstrous problem also with trash versus um, recycling. But they don't have, you know, a very active." crew running the uh, running the transfer station. Can we start some sort of a marketing campaign to, to kind of get people to? Yes, we can. We're, we're working on that. Yes. All right. We do a town-wide mailing. We, we 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 wanted to put something in with the tax bill, but it was too full already. It was going to be extra postage. <laughs> there had to be an advertisement. That's that. So, we, but we wanted to put a blurb in about that in the tax bills because we know we can reach out to everybody that way. Or the visitor. Well, we, we, we do mm -hmm. put stuff in the visitor. I mean, there, there have been articles in there, but it doesn't seem to get as much readership as we'd like. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Carl. Dana, mm -hmm. what do you got for us? Dana Mudfield, Capital Improvement. Um, and it's been a pretty quiet year. We haven't really done much, but as I sit here, I hear Capital Improvement, Capital Improvement, Capital Improvement. Mm -hmm. It looks like the road ahead uh, we're going to be busier than we were. Um, one of the things that I would be remiss if I didn't mention was at a pre-town meeting a year ago, uh, I said that I would put some stuff on the website to explain some of the logistics behind Ron's desire to replace certain equipment more frequently, and I have been remiss. I didn't do it. And, so you know, um, Dana, though, pardon? There, I do have on um, the highway website my equipment list. With yes, equipment. you do, but what I'm talking about is trying to explain to people Sorry. the logistics mm -hmm. of why it makes more sense to trade an excavator, even though it only has 1,600 hours on it. Um, and I haven't done that, and I will do that. It's going to require visiting some equipment people. I've talked to John Deere. I will talk to some other people. And I think if I put some numbers together, put it out there, 
it'll be more transparent. And I kind of got spanked verbally at the town meeting, and hey, I had it coming. Uh, so that's something that I need to do, and I will see that happens. Um, of the function of the capital improvement planning, to some degree, is to serve the select board with perhaps doing groundwork for them on capital improvements that get submitted uh, and put them, because they ultimately have the yay nay power, uh, but it, it would do some of the groundwork for them so they'd be more informed about some of these more technical things. So, in the interest of the two-minute request, I will yield the floor. <laughs> do, do we do we have your spreadsheet on on the, the website? Uh, at all? You know your there's the list. There's the one from oh, the oh, uh, the master for the whole town. From, from the long-range <coughs> financial plan is on the town administrator page, and was also in a in a post um, that was just uh, sort of news. Um, it's down below the where you'd have to scroll now. You'd have to do some clicking to get to that version. But there's one on, on my page. Uh, and that's the one that was the original one from Joe Markarian that we're waiting to update. So um, we don't have anything since then. Okay. But we do, have something, we do have something. We do have something on the website. To come in yes. In some areas. Ron's been good about getting it in. Uh, and I think, you know, the garage facility, that's going to probably will be interacting with those folks too, so mm -hmm. right. anyway. Thank you, Dana. Bruton, what do we got? Hey everybody, I'm Bruton Strange. I'm with the Conservation Commission. Um, I am the acting head of the Conservation Commission. Uh, for those of you who don't know what we do, we're basically the local extension arm of the <coughs> Department of Environmental Protection for the state of Massachusetts. And we, uh, the goal is to try to help people um, navigate all the laws that uh, occur around uh, water-based natural resources in town. So if you've got a river or a, um, a creek or a wetland on your property, you've probably met someone from our committee. But, uh, but uh, one of our crucial functions is we serve as part of the permitting um, process. So every building permit that goes through here, the CONCOM has to sign off on. Um, and uh, so we meet twice a month. Every month I've been on the committee, maybe eight or nine years. Um, and uh, this last year we've had a bit of an issue with uh, members. And we've been down to three, which is our quorum for quite a while. Um, and then we were up to four, and that was pretty good. And then we lost two. <laughs> so then we're down to two. Um, John Gates, who was our previous chair, and uh, Peter Zale, they left us. So it's now just me and uh, Robert Novak, if any of you guys know him. Um, but unfortunately, we need a quorum to issue permits, so Bob Armstrong has stepped up to be our third um, for the time being. Uh, so it's, it is an important uh, committee in that we, we serve a real, uh, we're an important part of getting stuff done, getting people's projects done. Um, and also for conserving natural resources uh, where we live. So I think that's about it. Um, I definitely, if anybody knows, anyone's interested, it's actually a pretty interesting committee. Uh, we go all over town and uh, we meet all kinds of people and we see all sorts of stuff. I was just at Lee's house the other day. Um, so these things, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting. So anybody knows anybody, uh, you don't have to know really much. You just kind of have to be interested um, and have the time. So please spread the word because we are kind of hurt and these guys have to step in because of the permitting function of it. Um, I think that's it. Thanks, Bruton. Uh, everybody who got a tax bill uh, will note that uh, there was a pink slip in there asking for volunteers for Bruton's committee, which is an extremely important committee. And hopefully uh, that will generate you know, some interest. Uh, maybe you'll get some people that want to want to serve on that committee with you. I hope so. Yeah. Chief Baker, what do we got? Robert Baker, Fire Chief. Uh, I don't know how to start this, but I think uh, in the uh, 
far as the business of the fire department goes in the last two or three months, we received this information from OSHA and the Department of Labor Standards of what they're expecting of every town as of February of this coming year. And if they made it law, they'd come into the town of Conway and they'd close our doors. Um, and the biggest reason is, is the garage. We get a page and a half of checklist and we went over that, with me and my officers at a meeting the other night. I think there was one or two categories that we met and the rest of them we'd fail at. And it is none of our doing. It's all about the building and the safety of the firefighters around the building, in the quarters. Uh, one of the biggest things they talk about, and the absolute biggest thing is, when you open them garage doors before you turn the key on, there's supposed to be an exhaust system getting rid of all the particulates out of the building. And that's big money, big money to put in. Uh, and the other thing is with this DLS and, and the OSHA requirements coming up is, and I'm not very happy about it, and neither is any of the fire chiefs in the rural communities, not so much the city communities, because we all know what the cities want to do. They tend to want to take the little departments over. And that may be a step toward doing that in the future, because if you follow the standards that they're setting forward for any new coming, incoming people to join your force, I can't proceed in a bit of a want to join the fire department again after they read what they got to go through. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to go through physicals, you got to go through doctor's exams, you got to go through uh, all kinds of different paperwork and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the person that wants to volunteer their time in a small community like we have, we have 20 volunteers, I can't foresee anybody's ever going to want to do that again. Mm -hmm. And it's a shameful thing. So that's true for volunteers too, not just for well, the, 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 full time. It's it's not supposedly. The, the, Tom, you maybe you know more about this than this. No. We only got a small pack of of the big set of lots. That's all we've seen, because supposedly they were sent out to the towns, but I haven't seen anything on that. Uh, I, I was talking with a fire chief who went to the new state meeting last week, two weeks ago, and he said that the state of Massachusetts has sent out big handbooks to all the parents in the, in the Commonwealth. Well, nobody's seen them yet. Um, so, we're hoping to have a uh, meeting in January with the lady, one of the ladies that runs part of the organization down there, and to have her come up to the fire chief's meeting in, in Green, I think it's in Greenfield. And uh, we're gonna devote the whole night to her, talking with her about things, and uh, because we're, I know the small communities are not happy at all. And the biggest, and, the, and it's going to be a huge expense because what we normally do in our standard operating procedures and our, and our handbooks and stuff like that, they don't meet any of the new requirements. And I'm not so sure that you are not going to have to hire companies to come in from the outside and figure out what your committees do and write all this stuff for you. And that's going to be big money. Um, and I, so I'm not going to talk about that DLS and the OSHA anymore because it's, it's too upsetting to me because I can see what's the coming in the future. I think it's going to be a, in the future down the road it's going to be a big takeover in the state of Massachusetts. Also, our firemen have been going through a lot of uh, classes and one particular most important one we ever took was is uh, cancer awareness class. I don't know if any of you have seen any of the paperwork coming out in the papers about Firefighters getting cancer, an enormous amount of them are getting cancer. Yep. And it's because of the carcinogenics and stuff that we go through in fires and you turn out gear and stuff. And, and so we've taken this class, this awareness class, and trying to work out proper and appropriate steps to take to try to prevent a lot of it. But one of the biggest things is cleaning your turnout gear. Mm -hmm. And to clean your turnout gear, you have to have a special washing machine and a special giant dryer. Dryer and big washing machine. Well, the town of the county doesn't have one. Most all the communities don't have one. I know the only one around here, I think, is South Deer and Greenfield have one. And that's, I think that's it that I know. So if we were to look into the future of that, and it's probably, I'm going to guess, probably thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 for a piece of equipment like that, where are you going to put it? Where are we going to house it? Right we can't house it in the firehouse. <laughs> There's no room. We can't house it in the firemen's association building. There's no room. And they don't own the water. 
The water is donated to the town of county. So there's two items against this right there alone in that department. So, um, and my guys are really very, very much aware about this cancer awareness because because we, of all these classes we've taken and we've been reading more and more about you. Read, you read, pick up a magazine, you read more and more about it all day. I mean, I probably get 10, 10 uh, emails a, a week about cancer awareness in the fire departments. Does the cancer come from chemicals that are used? Coming from the chemicals in the burning houses and stuff like that. In the smoke? In the smoke. In the smoke, mm -hmm. I see. And one last thing to go along about it is the safety of our firefighters breathing in when they go into a fire. Is we have 10 Scott packs in on our the trucks that are over, over the national average uh, by three to four years. Mm -hmm. We haven't pushed to have them replaced because they're in great shape because we don't use them that much compared to some of the bigger cities. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But we're gonna have to look for it in the future. Yeah. And when we start looking at that, you're looking at $80,000 to sure. replace them. Yeah. That's just one shot. 10 packs and 10 bottles, so close to 70, 70 between 70 and 80,000 yeah. at today's rate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we could be looking at, the fire department could be looking at, um, we're, we're going to be sitting down in the next month and doing our budget. We could be looking at coming back to you people and trying to ask for a lot of money this next year. I don't know where you're going to get it from or what, what, what's ever going to happen about it. But. Yeah, okay. Th thanks, Bob. Yep. Uh, any information that you get on safety and the adequacy of our facility. Would you copy Walter on that uh, with the garage, the highway uh, facilities committee? I can uh, give you that checklist if you want. From the voucher and DLS. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Chief. Mark. My name is Mark Silverman. I'm the, um, on the Conway Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, a couple of years ago, when I explained about what we do, Joe was very sympathetic since we only had a couple cases a year at best. <laughs> and uh, so he didn't want us to feel neglected. So they started an initiative with the planning board to actually um, have some special permitting um, be done through the Conway Zoning Board of Appeals, which actually did a couple things. Um, applicants for variances are actually um, we're supposed to, by all guidance, to make it difficult to have a, um, to be granting variances, because it's some, something that's supposed to be you know with great hardship and and really be unusual. But um, most of the the cases that we've had since I've been on the board were actually things that would have been um, taken care of very well with a special permit. And so this year we actually had a couple of hearings for special permits, and it was a very simple process. Really allowed. Um, the butters and people in the area to, excuse me, to weigh in on it, and um, it was a, a very good process to go through for people that are um, requesting um, you know, flexibility in the zoning um, laws. And when Joe, when John, you were talking about um, how people were curious about doing a meeting like this, um, one thing that that sounds like it's unusual. Jim Hawkins, the building inspector, was actually very pleased that we have the ability to do that. So he would say thank you because it's something that um, it's by all logic, um, a lot of ways to have to be, be flexible is not through variance, but actually excuse me, through um, special permits. So that's been, that's been very good. Um, and the other thing we've done this year is we've, um, it's always very difficult to ask people um, in a hearing to shake them down for the, their contributing the costs of um, notifications, like with the newspaper articles, things like that, uh, advertisements. And so we, we, we actually made some adjustments in the application process where um, an applicant has to pay up front. And that's something that makes it far easier to make sure we get the money that we need to, to pay for um, uh, the notification process. So it's actually, you know, there have been some improvements. Right. Thank you, Mark. Glad we could help out. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no longer from the collector. Yeah, so you've done more than we have now. We can only remember doing two special You've done two, you've caught up to three. Right. It's, it, it's very competitive. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, what have we got? Uh, I, I'm uh, in the, in the uh, 
odd and unfortunate position of being um, the dinosaur on two dysfunctional committees, two committees that have no chairman at the moment. I'm secretary for the Community Preservation Committee and for the Park Trails and Rec Committee. Um, and um, uh, <clears throat> seeking, seeking chairman for both at this point. Uh, not, not a lot happening in either committee. Community preservation, we don't have a chair. Uh, yeah, Peter Peter Zell was the chair. He's resigned. And John Heffernan was the chair of uh, of REC, and he he recently resigned. Okay. I think I think it's, it's somewhat a sign of the times. I think people are really stressed uh, and strung out, especially the the people that might be on the park and REC, which <coughs> tends to be people with children. Uh, they just they just don't have time. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Joe, what have we got? Um, Joe Sergowski, I guess I'm vice chair of the planning board. Mary's out on medical conditions. Um, just a recap, at spring meeting, you passed the large-scale industrial commercial facility bylaw, and then just recently the marijuana adult use bylaw. Both of those are currently at the AG's <coughs> office, awaiting their approval and decision on those. Um, they asked for they're on their second 90-day extension on the large-scale solar, so uh, large-scale industrial. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, going forward for the coming year, we have a number of things that we're trying to prioritize and start working on. One is uh, the master plan. It's currently six years old. Um, we're trying to clean up the house numbering process. There's actually a state law or enhanced 911, I think Bob, I sent you a copy. Mm -hmm. And we have our own town bylaw, but houses have not been numbered. I suspect if we went around the room, there may be some of the committee members that haven't, or board members that haven't numbered their houses yet. Um, Bob mentioned one of the issues is when we get people coming in from <coughs> out of town, mm -hmm. most of the numbers are only from the center of town out. So if you're coming in on mutual aid, I guess, or something like that, it's hard, difficult to see the numbers. What some people have done that have opted to put numbers on their mailboxes, they put them on the side of the mailbox in the, in the direction that the mailman delivers the mail. Mm -hmm. And very often it's the opposite direction that the fire and ambulances are coming from. Mm -hmm. So you'll go right by the place looking for a number, and it's on the back side of the mailbox. You have to get by it, you can't see it. So that's become a big issue, too. So Bob has actually suggested we have a little meeting, maybe well, another small mini meeting <laughs> with ambulance and fire and mm -hmm. see if we can't clean that up. So that's on our list. Um, we did have one rejection by the uh, CBA for commercial signage for the bank. An interesting problem, the bank came to the planning board and said that they're the banks are struggling a little bit. There's a lot of competition, I guess, and getting your money is difficult. So they asked to put a big sign up. That was their hardship plea, but we figured out they had to go to the ZBA and it got rejected. And so again, we realized that maybe this is an opportunity, if you will, to look at the special permit process. Maybe our sign bylaw is too restrictive. It only allows you to have a three by five sign, um, which I guess is small by the bank's standpoint. But only, and only one of them. What's that? And only one sign, right? as opposed to yeah. having more than one. Right. So they wanted to put a big sign on the building, as I recall. Mm -hmm. But it was, it, they hired a marketing company from Amherst to yes. try and pump up sales. So uh, that's something we're going to take a look at. Um, <clears throat> we're keeping our eye on tiny houses and Airbnb to see if there's anything there that needs to be regulated. I guess we'll stay in touch with <clears throat> the... Board of Health, see if, if anything happens there. We would like to think about converting our bylaws to a use table. We tried it in, I think in 2013, and it, and it got tabled <laughs> in our typical town fashion. So we have to figure out how to get past the tabling of the use table. But um, and we also are expecting that we might um, be looking at a six megawatt solar farm in Conway off of Main Poland Road, mm -hmm. right at the intersection of I guess it's Ashfield and Williamsburg and Main Poland Road. Um, I believe they went through the CONCOM. And 
They did. We uh, their process there. Yeah, we laid out what was sensitive up there and what wasn't. Yeah. So that was the, their first big step. They had told us that they, they would be back early in the fall, but we haven't heard anything. So I don't know if, if the new, um, what's it called, the SMART program, you know, the new solar program mm -hmm. has, has affected uh, their economics, but we haven't heard anything from them. They designed and assuming the SMART program. I mean, they used the SMART program they, from the start. Yeah. Okay. Um, that probably takes care of the planning board. I'm also chair of the sewer rats, <laughs> which is also known as the alternative uh, wastewater disposal group. Uh, with the select board approval, we did apply for a mass works grant for one and a half million. Um, the closing date on the award is this Thursday, I believe. Um, like like uh, Ron, we haven't heard anything, so I'm not optimistic that, that we did get an award, so it'll be back to the drawing board on that one. Um, I think that's it. Okay. Between, between planning and, and Board of Health, do we know how many Airbnbs we have in town? Yes, we do. I can't tell you what the number is, but we, we have a track on every one of them. But you don't know what the number is? It, it's, it's under 10. It varies day to day. Yeah, it, <coughs> it, it does vary. Okay. We're, we're not but being overrun, though. No. Okay. Good. <laughs> Murph, what do we got? Not much. Okay. Uh, it was a quiet year. No I'm emergencies. Murphy, uh, emergency management director. Uh, one little thing, I, I have a helper now, Phil Snow, uh, unpaid position as my assistant. He's new to town, lives on Graves Road, actually right across the street from me. Uh, he's the uh, assistant director of security at DA, so he's a great person to have on board. Tremendous amount of experience in these issues, um, but he doesn't know town at all, so that kind of makes us a decent pair. Uh, it was a busy year monitoring what was going on. I think in July, I got 25 flash <coughs> flood notifications. There was not a single flash flood. Uh, this is kind of the game we play. I've gotten over 100 notifications about the situation in Lawrence, which doesn't <laughs> affect us. Uh, so um, we occasionally get some pressure from people to add other, that we should be doing more, we should be notifying people when the dump is closed, things like that. One in town out east, I don't remember whether it was Rentham or Wareham actually put on their emergency system. When the food service company failed to deliver tater tots to the grammar school. <laughs> uh, that qualifies, I'm sorry. <laughs> we're not going there. Uh, if, you, if you, we, we are very concerned about uh, fatigue I mean, you look at all of the calls we all get every day that we don't want. Um, and uh, so if there's an emergency and we're warned, of course, you got to remember, nobody knew about the tornado. There was no warning. Uh, but if we have any indication that something dangerous is coming, we will do our best to get that information out to you. But we re we're really wary of the boy who cried wolf. What, what are we doing these days with the um, our 911 system in terms of our, our call around town system? Well, um, we are waiting right now for a new computer for Phil, which we ordered which we, on, a, on a grant. Uh, and as soon as he has that in place, then he and I are going to do a tutorial with that company so that either of us can send, I mean, I can send them out now. I have not been doing that. Um, I know Dave used to do them occasionally. I have not done that. Uh, well, we, could, we could do it if we had to. Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay, good. good. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it is a good idea to test it at least yeah. once a year so we'll, you find we'll out we'll what the bad phone numbers are. I've been putting it off because I've been wanting to get Phil on board, you know, so that we can do a, you know, like a stellar nerve or something. Sure. Do a, okay. do a combined. Great. Thank you, Murph. Okay. Hopefully everything stays quiet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Lee, what do you have for us? I knew if I sneaked in close enough, she wouldn't be able to get me up. <laughs> I'm going here, you're going down. <laughs> here, I have a mirror here. That's right. <laughs> um, well, everyone heard from the assessors and the tax collector last week. So uh, our bills did go out, although they were late. 
um, largely because we were doing the extra data collection this year. That ended up working very much to our benefit. We found a great deal more new growth, and that helped to keep the increase in the tax rate down to 15 cents. We are very happy about that. Um, we'll be well, one, of the, one of the things that happened in our office was an upgrade in the wiring. Uh, at one point, the entire room worked on one circuit with the several computers and everything else we have in there. Circuits were added individually for the air conditioner and for the big copier, but we have the big conversion starting most any time, and I was concerned that all of a sudden we would have a, a system failure there. So money was found, thank you, Tom, to get that upgraded, put in um, some new circuits of a, uh, a higher rating for both Ginny's and the RN, and so we're in good shape there. The, um, we've worked on several different matters, at least talked about them with the other committees represented here, planning board and so forth. Always happy to, to share our maps, anything like that. Um, the conversion of our valuation program, the one that takes the data we put in and cranks out the taxable value is coming along. The state is helping to sponsor it for those of us towns who had the state system. Uh, they got delayed a little bit because they're trying to accommodate all the different little ways that the various towns had, had used it. And uh, it's, it's not a, a system that was use, used a great deal in Massachusetts. So they're bringing it to Massachusetts standards and really going to present us with a beautiful uh, product sometime in the next few months. We will be running a couple of years of both programs in order to make sure that the data converts correctly. Um, and uh, that's about it for now. Okay. Yeah. Our, our, our GIS system seems to be working very well. Yes, and I hear many times that people have been looking on it and using it. I think it's great. We have a great <coughs> many, uh, many, many fewer uh, real estate professionals coming in the office now, which is terrific. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're finding the data online and uh, using it from that. Insurance people, the same. Mm -hmm. um, we think it's great. Good. Yep. Great. Thank, thank you. Lynn. Yep. School Tom. Uh, Tom School. Let me uh, first report, um, I got something from Julie Petty for Parks and Rec. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, well, actually, actually, that's, that's uh, for the, for, uh, for Conway, Conway Youth Sports. Sports. Yeah. A, uh, a subdivision. A subdivision. <laughs> yeah. Um, but first, let me, let me just start with a, a couple of points from the ambulance department. Gemma <clears throat> gave her regrets she couldn't be here. Um, they, uh, the ambulance department, they are currently holding steady with the number of calls. And as always, they are actively looking for new EMTs. So if anyone who lives or works in town um, is interested in becoming an EMT, please contact Gemma or Chris, ambulance at townofconway.com. If you know of anybody who knows of anybody, please contact them um, if you see someone walking on the side of the road uh, <laughs> grab them uh, for Conway Youth Sports um, last year uh, Julie Petty was the administrator and the soccer sports director Jason Hunter was the basketball sports director and Jeff Canepa was the um, baseball sports director uh, Conway Youth, Youth Sports remains financially strong with a balance at the end of FY18 of $4,056. Uh, this year, they're working on getting financial reports formatted to match their buy sport tracking. Systemic changes in programming and staffing resulted in the need to spend considerable time on this. Uh, monthly expense reports seem to be working well, but they're still working on getting monthly income reports. Note that uh, Conway Youth Sports is a true revolving account with income and expenses fluctuating with each sport. 
While much of the preparatory effort happened earlier, FY18 marked the conversion to online registration, including waivers and payment. This change has been great for all. Parents find this easier, and they've only had positive reactions. Additionally, the town treasurer and the Conway Youth Sports Administrator spend considerably less time on Conway Youth Sports registration, waivers, and deposits. Laura Hannes at the school also no longer needs to be involved in registration or payment. Jan Warner, our treasurer collector, was instrumental in working on this. The Unipay support staff, that's the, the bank program we use, has been excellent, easy to reach, clear, and responsive. Uh, you may have noticed some new benches on the fields. These were purchased by Parks and Rec in FY18. They are 100% recycled and come with a 50-year guarantee. <laughs> Thanks to Jason Hunter for signing off on this purchase and for transport and assembly. Uh, for, uh, for fiscal year 19, uh, all of the following are in the works but should be completed. A Conway Youth Sports calendar with dates for registration, field registrations, and appointments. Job descriptions for the administrator, the sports director, and the coaches. And uh, a host of miscellaneous policies which are necessary for the town for liability and, and clarity purposes. Uh, including uh, codes of conduct. Uh, and also, uh, in, tw in uh, this year, we will need to find a replacement for each of these roles. Administrator to replace Julie Petty. She's leaving after four years in that position. The soccer sports director uh, has also been Julie, and we need somebody for that. And a baseball sports director to replace Jeff. Mm. That's a report from Julie Petty on Conway Youth Sports. Uh, for myself, um, I'm planning to introduce next fall a town academy in which each department or board head uh, or a combination of them would meet with residents. Uh, this would go for about eight to ten weeks, uh, perhaps one meeting per week. Uh, those who complete the program would get a certificate we're working on how many you'd actually have to attend to get the certificate. Uh, it would initially be set up as a 30 to 45 minute presentation, break with refreshments, and 30 to 45 minute question and answer session. Of course, this could vary depending on the crowd. Each department would create presentations on departmental budgets, staff, typical work, relation to other departments, and any specialized equipment. This is where our, our fire department and our highway department get to show off their, uh, their fancy equipment, including that new fire truck. Uh, uh, this has been very successful in other communities, and I look forward to seeing how it works here. Uh, in other news, we used state grant money for 60% of the cost of renovating the restroom here on the first floor to make it accessible. I'm planning to ask at the Springtown meeting for 40% matching funds for the design of a lift for the town hall, making the upstairs accessible. I expect um, the design uh, not to cost a lot. Eventually, the, the, the whole project would cost maybe from $100,000 to $120,000. Um, but first, we'd have to have it designed, and then we can get another 60% matching grant for the construction. So this is a long-term process. It would take two years to, for that whole process to go through. At the end of it, we would end up paying 40% of the cost of the design and construction of a lift to make the upstairs accessible, open to meetings, and perhaps um, renovations with office spaces further down the line. Uh, and finally, as you may have noticed when you got your tax bills, we are looking for an administrative assistant to help with various committees, commissions, and boards in town. We have one excellent applicant so far, but please let me know if you know of anyone else. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Phil. And, oh, um, and Lisa. Yes, and go ahead, Lisa. Um, so the guide for town appointees and elected officials, if you didn't get one, 
there's probably mm -hmm. some more on the back table there. Um, it's basically the same as it was last year. There have been a, a couple of minor um, additions. If you take a look at it, um, if you notice anything that isn't clear or you think should be um, improved in some way, please let me know. And uh, there is an addenda that has some of your handy dandy forms that you need to pay attention to. And I would just like to note that the open meeting law materials um, the, and the conflict of interest requirements, um, we've, Laura um, in the assessor's office and myself have been helping people who for whatever reason don't have the right computer at home to do the conflict of interest training or um, we've been helping people uh, to get those uh, requirements taken care of in our offices. So if you or anybody else on your committees need help getting those things done in a timely way, um, you can contact me or contact Laura and we'll help you out with that because we want it to be e as easy as possible for people to comply with those requirements. Um, and I think that's all I have to say. I'm glad so many of you came tonight. I know it's a big sports night, so. <laughs> <laughs> They've already lost. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa, for all your work on this. <clears throat> a very, very important document. <clears throat> Phil, you're gonna give us input from the school committee? Sure. Um, so yeah, also on the Conway School Committee and uh, I'm in that committee is represented to the Frontier School Committee. So the Conway, Conway Grammar School this year is the number 18th ranked school in the state of Massachusetts out of 390. Yay. Our third grade and our sixth grade are ranked in the top five. Um, uh, and Frontier is also by far the highest ranked public school in the county. Um, the, uh, I'd like to thank uh, our state senator uh, Hines, who got a sparsity, rural sparsity school aid act passed, which benefits our town specifically, $100 per student in the grammar school, which is going to be a little over $11,000 this year, which is just extra money from the state, which is great. Um, and Frontier is also getting an extra $100, so that's 60 something thousand for uh, Frontier. Uh, so we'll also get a portion of that. Um, and uh, so, so the, there, in the Frontiers, big news is that there is a 10-year bondy kind of a thing, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, big, it's a big long-term plan that includes uh, some borrowing, some raising through uh, assessment. And, the, what, what the, and the, the enrolling of that is November 13th. Um, anybody with in, interest in that, we'd really benefit from your coming to that. Um, it's at the Library Media Center at the... Frontier Regional School. It's at seven o'clock. The um, the the borrowing is necessitated because of the the big upfront expense to fix the track, which has reached the end of its life expectancy, which has something like a close to a six hundred thousand dollar price tag to replace. Um, the track, however, is near and dear to our own Jim Recor, who has been the assistant track coach there for how many years? I don't know. Um, uh, but that's the only reason why there's any borrowing at all. The forecast for Conway's impact on that, your school committee has been preparing for this for the couple of years. If you will recall from our town meetings, we've been doing, the grammar school has been doing a capital stable grammar school stabilization fund, um, which the original goal was to get to 300,000. There's now 270, 280, really close to that. So the thinking was from your school committee that we would forego doing that. We've come close enough to the goal that that $50,000, instead of going into the state, will, will go towards the frontier 10-year uh, uh, project, which should more than cover our, uh, the increase in, it, I think the first year would be something like 45,000, the cost of that project, the whole thing to the town. Um, uh, so that's, that's the, the hope is that it won't affect our assessment, um, and hopefully you'll agree with that when you see it, when you see everything, because mathematics doesn't lie. Um, uh, the other thing is, as, as the, uh, the, I'm also the head of the, the policy committee, um, so I, I would really uh, 
uh, I, I, I heard that you were thinking about something. I'm, I'm head of the Frontier Policy Committee and the Union 38 mm -hmm. Policy Committee. The, the idea of you doing policies for to cover the school, um, I understand why you're doing it. I definitely question the legality of it and the propriety of that. I, the, our policies don't just come from the policy manual for, for the employee, for the unionized employees. Many of the policies are contained in, in their collective bargaining agreement, oh, the yes, collective we're, bargaining we're agreement. That. Yeah, okay. I, I didn't even know where you guys were at with that. No, but. no, it, it, I mean, Susan Fenton has looked at this very closely, but there are federal laws that touch municipal employees, mm -hmm. and because they are town employees by virtue of being paid by the town, something has to be put into the, their, their uh, own handbook, which says, and I think one of them is the FMLA, the, you know, the, fa the family leave, that has to be in there because they are employees of the town. It doesn't Yeah, that stuff's in there already. It doesn't, well, there are other things too, but it do what's being done is, does not affect at all, has nothing to do with the bargaining, and that's out of our hands. We do nothing with that. Because if there's the slightest variation between what town policies and school policies, that's just grist for the grievance makers amongst us. Uh, and it makes it that much harder for the employer to prevail in any grievance process when there's ambiguity amongst conflicting pro policies. Well, the um, red flag that was held up um, by Susan, Phil, was that case law shows that when a teacher sues a school, she sues the town. And this is of concern from the point of view of the town. You see, and that's that's the the red flag that was put up, and um, so Susan is working on the question of really what, again, knowing collective bargaining is basic, but uh, the question is still something has to be consistent within their handbook and our handbook that is okay. And, and, and we realize there are policies they have that are not in their handbook. Right. Um, and, and that's a, you know, kind of a, a secondary issue. And, but yeah, we're, we're, we're certainly not touching any of the union issues. No, not at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It's just we've got to work out this that. problem of case law. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's, uh, that's all I have to say on the policy issue then. Right. Thank, thanks, Phil. I got one more. <coughs> okay. So the broadband committee, the yep. great news for the broadband committee was in the end of August, Comcast completed the extension to our, with, to our Comcast network, which affects a bunch of people in the room anyway. And, and uh, so we have about 220 or so new people that now can get access to Comcast that couldn't get it before. So I know nobody believed it was really going to happen, but it finally happened. So the only other thing is we're just starting our negotiation for our next franchise agreement. And uh, we have a broadband, small broadband committee that's meeting with Comcast and a possible lawyer, and we're working on that. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize over the last, what is it, 10 years now that you've worked on this? At least 10, probably 12. Bob, Bob has done a tremendous yep. amount of work to get uh, broadband into town and the unserved portion of town served. Uh, and he's done it almost by himself. And, and I, think, uh, I think those residents who have recently been connected Oh, Bob, a big thank you. No, no, no. You can thank Comcast. That's the, you know, they're the ones who did it. He's stuck with it. Yeah. He's yeah. stuck with it for a uh, the, the, the great news for Conway, and it's actually almost hard to talk about this, is that Comcast was required to raise the percent of people that can get access to their network to 96%. That was the law. That was, that was the agreement we had with the state. Mm -hmm. And here in Conway... There are only two homes that I know of that can't get access to Comcast, and one of them is a summer cottage. Mm -hmm. We wrote to the guy, and he said he really didn't care. And 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 the problem there was, and I mean, and Lee's Lee's home was a perfect example. Her driveway comes out in Ashfield, 
and 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 so Comcast didn't have her on their list. Right. The so so, the so we had to go around and find people that were sort of like left off accidentally. And this guy's driveway comes out also in mm -hmm. in, in, in Ashfield, and but but he doesn't use his his little cottage, so mm -hmm. it was, he didn't care. Bob, Bob doesn't like to tell our neighboring communities that, that we're 99.9% .9 mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, done because they'll, they'll shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, and they're at 96% and, and County has stopped in their towns. So that, that no, 94%. So that difference is about 40 homes. So they did about 40 homes here in Conway that really they were not obligated to do. Mm -hmm. And didn't cost us anything. Yeah. No, no, we have. No, anyway. Thank, thank so. you, Bob. Okay, the select board. Well, as you know, basically, you know, the select board is is tasked with with two major responsibilities. Mm -hmm. We have to be concerned with uh, the health, safety, and welfare of our residents, uh, and and we make decisions based on on those things. And we also have to make sure that our tax dollars are being spent. Uh, to their maximum advantage and benefit to the residents of the town. Uh, and, and a lot of times, uh, and I'm sure you see this at the committee level, that, that uh, residents don't always understand that, that we really want to try to do those things. Uh, some of the comments I get sometimes um, it are, are kind of um, indicative that people don't truly understand what we're trying to do on the board. And certainly on the board, we listen to you. We listen to all the committees, uh, the other boards, the commissions, the councils, for your input and your wisdom on, on issues that we need to, uh, to make decisions on, which, which is extremely important because you guys are, are, are important. You look around in town and you see the number of people that, that volunteer on committees and, and councils, boards, commissions, and it's very few people. As you saw here tonight, we have a number of important committees that don't have enough volunteers. And uh, you know, in the in the small towns of Western Massachusetts, we're we're basically doing a lot of this on a voluntary basis, and it's extremely important. There are more and more mandates coming down from the state um, to do things to to make sure that we're we're doing the job the way we should do, and um, it it gets to be a strain on people at times. Uh, so certainly, anyone listening to us. If you want to volunteer for any of these committees, please do, because these are important people in front of you. They do a lot of work uh, for your health, uh, safety, and welfare. And um, again, we're trying to be fiscally responsibility in every way we can, so that we can keep taxes under control and basically give the residents uh, just about everything they need to, to live in town uh, in a manner that's, that's satisfactory to them. So I thank you all for being here tonight, and I think this was very, very enlightening. And uh, please talk to one another, and please talk to us when you have something. Okay. And we're coming into budget season very shortly. <laughs> Woohoo! Lucky us. May I to adjourn? Thank you all for being here. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Let's do it. Let's go.